Hey friends, it's Tuesday, first week of being, you know, free from real work and I'm gonna start my sensor. I have no idea what I'm doing and if you don't know what you're doing either, that's okay. The thanks for coming to this video. We'll figure it out together. <laughs> Before we get into this video, guys, I did want to say that this video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. So thanks to Dev Mountain, I'm able to create all of these videos and teach you hopefully more about the magical, you know, skills and life that comes from programming. So if you don't know Dev Mountain, they are a coding school that teach development, web or iOS apps, and they also teach UX design, which is user experience design. So if you're interested, go check out Dev Mountain. The link is in my description. Thank you to Dev Mountain for sponsoring this video. So the first thing I'm assuming to build a sensor is to figure out what parts do you actually need. From the grant, PhD grant proposal I wrote, I kind of know what I need. Here is what I'm gonna lay out, right? To build a sensor, you probably need, you can like buy the sensing components. I don't have to, you know, connect two different wires just to build a thermocouple. Like I can buy a waterproof temperature sensor on Alibaba, for example. I can buy a pressure sensor. I can buy a turbidity sensor, which I will need to modify eventually. But let's not worry about that yet. So to build a sensor, you probably need the sensor. <laughs> Doesn't really make sense. In addition to actually getting the sensor, somehow you need to control it. And I'm assuming that's what the Arduino Uno board is. I'm not sure. Yes, so it looks like the Arduino board is the data logger. So it's the thing that controls, that you connect the battery to, you connect your sensors to, you connect your SD card to. I guess you can think of it as the motherboard, the mitochondria of my sensor. That's a good point, battery. I will probably need a battery and some way to connect the battery to the Arduino data logger. I'll also probably need an SD card somewhere to save the data that I collect from my sensors. So, so far we have sensors, we have data logger, we have battery, probably good, and we have SD cards somewhere to actually save our data. So you take your components, you sense temperature, etc. Those go through the wires into your data logger, the data logger is powered from battery, also connected by wires. The data that is collected is saved onto an SD card. We probably need to figure out a way to start and stop the components. So what I found online is that we could actually connect an RTC module. And what is an RTC module? It is basically a real-time clock. So it's a clock basically and then you can I guess program the Arduino um, board to be like okay every 30 seconds take a measurement. Or instead of a real-time clock you can incorporate a on-off battery switch. We're gonna incorporate a real-time clock because that's what I want to do. <laughs> so my university has a maker space. If you don't know what a makerspace is, maybe you have one in your city. It's basically somewhere where people go to like work on their projects. Usually they have um, like solder stations, uh, lathes, different machine tools that you can use to build whatever you want to build. And then also usually they have components for sale. So my university has a makerspace. So I'm gonna go there now and try to find all these components that I need with the sensor. So, Come with me. It's much later in the day. I forgot my camera at home because I am a bad YouTuber <laughs> and I don't want to film outside. So I came back. This is what I bought. This is everything that I got from un our university's makerspace. So this is an Arduino nano board. 
it's basically the data logger we were talking about. Here you have a little USB phone charger slot. So I didn't actually need to get the battery, but since I won't have an outlet when I put these sensors out into the open, I figured I might as well figure out how to attach the batteries to this, this baby. So this is the Arduino Nano and it's gonna be used for data logging. This is basically just a practicing solder station. The guy convinced me to get it, it was one franc, <laughs> but I'm now thinking I probably don't need it, but I haven't soldered in a while, so who knows, maybe I will need it. Um, this is not even gonna be in the sensor, so it's useless. This little baby is a barometer. If you don't know, barometer is like a pressure sensor. These are pins, these you use to solder into the, basically these go in here. Then I just grabbed three wires, but I realized I don't have a solder machine at home, so those wires are gonna be kind of useless. And then finally, I have a seven volt, no, nine volt alkaline battery and a battery attachment thingy that will attach into the Arduino Nano. This battery is nine volts. This thing is like between five and 20 volts. I don't know. This thing was only two francs. So if I connect it and it explodes, then I'll just buy another one for two francs. Things that they didn't have, they didn't have a real-time clock, the RTC board module. So either I'm gonna attach a power switch or I'm gonna go find a real-time clock. They didn't have a turbidity sensor, which I figured I would have to buy on Amazon or Alibaba. They had one temperature sensor, but it was like this big and I was like, why is it that big? What is that missing? RTC module, temperature sensor, turbidity sensor. I think that's it, that's it, right? So, it is day two. What will I do today? Today, I'm going to play with this Arduino thing. I'm going to use the soldering machines and I'm gonna solder all of the little components together. How am I gonna do that? I mean, I know how to solder. What am I gonna connect to it? We're gonna find out. I've been doing quite a bit of research and I kind of figured out what I'm gonna do. This is the Arduino Nano. I don't have a macro lens, so I can't really zoom in to show you. This is a data logger. It has many different pins. Pins are these holes that you can see through. This is like a processor chip. These are little lights. And this is a micro USB thingy so you can put it into your computer. So now the pins have on this side analog inputs for analog sensors and digital inputs for digital sensors. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to go to the makerspace at our university. I'm going to put in these pins just like that and I'm going to solder them into the board. So I'm gonna take the little soldering machine and I'm gonna melt all of these pieces of metal together. And then I will attach wire connectors to all of these pieces. I don't think I will get past slowly soldering this without screwing up the entire thing. <laughs> and the wires, I'm gonna try to color coordinate them for what I need. So I'm gonna pick black wires for all of my grounds, red wires for all of my power supplies, yellow or white wires for all of the pins that lead that will lead to my real-time clock and then maybe I'll use a different color for like if I need an LED light and I'll use a different color for if I have my sensors. I will come back tonight or tomorrow morning and show you what all the soldering looks like. And then next week we'll talk more about this board because TBH, I kind of understand it, but I feel like if I explain it to you, I will better understand it and then we can learn together. <laughs> Hi, I'm back. It is Thursday. I did the solder thing yesterday. Here's my little Arduino Nano piece. It took me forever to do the soldering. Why? Because each one of these little components is so small and the soldering component, the solder machine is just, is just not meant, I think, 
for such small details. Probably would have been better if I had gotten the like Arduino Uno or one of the bigger Arduino boards, but I really wanted to, you know, start off hardcore. <laughs> and make the smallest sensor ever, so here it is. As you can see, I didn't actually have time to solder all of the wires. I only soldered two black wires onto the ground, which will be connected to my... One of these will be connected to the battery, and one of them will be connected to a resistor and a capacitor, like a voltage divider, so that I can track the battery voltage. Hopefully, I will have made more progress next week. I am going to do more research about this thing because I'm realizing that I actually don't know anything about electronics. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the research and then on Monday I will release a video, maybe, if you guys want, of my explanation about this thing and about Arduino boards in general. So if you think that would be interesting for you, I feel like I'm pretty good at explaining things. So if you want to see that video, then please let me know in the comments below and I will release that for Monday and I will do research this weekend. And then next Thursday, I will release an updated vlog about how I'm doing on this sensor. I think this way of making videos, like on Monday, do like a sit down video and on Thursdays release a vlog about my sensor update is a good method. If you agree, then let me know in the comments below. I realize I am really, really, really bad at filming in public because I don't want to take my camera out in front of people. So I was kind of like holding my camera like this and like trying to film. And then I remembered, I have this thing, I have a GoPro, which means I can actually film next time I'm at the solder machine and like do it a little discreetly. If you like this video, then please like it. If you wanna see more, please subscribe guys. 